So where will I find, I want to briefly introduce to you where you'll find stuff in Solaris 10. So if, again, if you're a Windows person, uh, God help you, you have C drive, D drive, E drive, depending on how many disks you add into the machine. In the Solaris world, everything is off of the root. And again, if you're a Windows person, you're used to the backslashes being the other way. Um, but everything is off of the root drive, and there's essentially two primary paths that you need to be aware of. Uh, user SBIN, and that's where all of the system administration tools are found, usually what the root user, or what you might know of as the root user would use. And then other command line utilities, just about everything else you would run, is usually found in the user bin directory. And if the binary isn't actually in that directory, there's usually a link to that binary in that directory. And then we have the opt directory. You'll find third-party software like StarOffice or OpenOffice generally goes there. Configuration files are in the Etsy directory. And then we have the var directory where log files are found. OK, so we are networked. We will use DHCP. I don't care about IPv6. Kerberos. So you're getting an idea. Hopefully, I know you have screens back there. I'm, I'm quickly going through some of the system setup. Uh, a name service, I'm not going to use one right now. Yeah, I'm selecting some defaults. Time zone, where are we? We're in Asia, India. OK. And then finally, the root password. And so I'll use uh, Solaris. OK, good. It's complete. Now the machine's going to boot. So it's a one-time thing. Uh, you all know my root password. That's pretty scary, right? All right, we'll talk about that in a moment. One other thing you'll notice, or at least people who come from Linux to Solaris that get somewhat frustrated by, is where your home directory resides. Uh, typically, you're used to home username. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, but for some reason on Solaris, it's in this export directory. And it, people ask me, why do you put your home directory there? And it goes back to that. Solaris was designed as a network, networked operating system. It always intended to be uh, in play with the network. And so at Oracle, when I log into my Solaris box, my home directory is auto-mounted for me to home B. Leonard, Brian Leonard. That's my user ID. Wherever I am, if I log in here from India or if I log in back home in the United States, uh, my home directory is there. That is all handled through um, a network file system that I'm going to talk about later called NFS. So if you want a physical local home directory, one that is not attached to the network, then we, put, we just decided to put it under export home user, uh, user ID. That's why you see that historically. OK, booting up, good. All right, so let's talk about users, what I call users, profiles, and roles. I was trying to decide what to call this section. One, one topic idea was um, getting rid of the root user. I told you you all had my root password, and that's pretty dangerous traditionally. So ultimately, what I'm going to do here is get rid of the root user. So the fact that you know that password becomes pretty harmless. And so. The, the current system, what's it, once it comes up, and it, it's going to come up in a moment, hopefully, all it's going to have is the root user defined that can log in. And I set that password just a moment ago. So the first thing you generally want to do on that system, it's not a good idea to do stuff as root. Um, so I'm going to actually create a user. And um, a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you today is command line based. And so here, this command, I'm going to use user add, the dash m is specifying that I want this particular user to have a home directory. And then the dash D is specifying where that home directory will reside. Now, the default shell that Solaris would give me is typically like a, a C shell. 
um, TCSH or something like that, CSH, I'm not sure which one. Either way, I don't want it. I want to use the more friendly bash shell. And if you're Linux people in the audience, that's probably the shell you're most used to. And so I could specify that as well when I create the user that I want bash to be the default shell. OK, here we go. So we've come up. I'm going to log in as root. So the first thing I'll quickly do is give you just a quick tour of the desktop. There's no, no rocket science here. Um, you know, you've got the, the launch menu, AKA the start menu, pretty common stuff under there. Uh, you've got the taskbar down here. You can add, or they call it, the, we call it the panel. You can add stuff to the panel. Let's say I add something I use all the time, which is the terminal. And I can you know, move that nice over here. If I want to copy on my desktop, I can drag that here, so you know, standard stuff. There's this nice little desktop overview uh, help you can click on. It'll open up and explain sort of all the nuances of using the Java desktop system. All right, so I've opened a terminal. I'm going to do the huh? All right, we'll ignore that. So user add dash m dash d. Sorry. Oh, um, hold on. Let me do what I'm doing, then I'll <laughs> user add dash dash m dash d. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I was ahead of myself. Thank you. Yes, export home b Leonard. Uh, this is what I'm doing, user bin bash for the shell, and then the user ID will use me, B. Leonard. OK, good. So I've created that user. One thing I wanted to show you, if I look at the, the existing users on the system, I can run the password command, and I see a list of users. And you'll notice there's only one user right now that has th these symbols, by the way. PS means there's a password. NL means no login. That user is not allowed to log in. And LK means locked. That account is locked out from logging into the system. And so the only user that can log in is root. You see a bunch of no login accounts, and then a bunch of locked accounts, of which B. Leonard is one of them. In order to unlock that account, I need to provide a password. So this is probably what goes on behind the scenes when you forget your password at whatever bank you use, and you call up, and they say, OK, Mr. Leonard, I've assigned you a new password, so we'll do password. B. Leonard, I'll do um, A, B, C, one, two, three. OK, so we've changed the password. Now, it's not safe for me, the, the person who changed it, to know the password. So I'm going to also set it so that the next time B. Leonard logs in, he has to change the password. And I can do that with the dash F parameter. There we go. Now if I do an, like something like an R login, Uh, let's see, what was it, ABC? Yeah, there it is. So choose a new password. And so say I try something ABC124. Nope, it's not strong enough, or it's not different enough for my, and my existing password. And that always annoys me. I sort of like to keep my passwords somewhat similar, which I realize is a bad thing to do. So I'll go with 123ABC. OK, so it's happy. I've changed. My password. Now, at this point, I should be able to log out. 